please just maybe I can come in. There you go! Hello folks, hope you're doing well. We're back with a new Marvelous video, and this time we're talking about the mysterious and deadly creatures from the TV series From. Season 3 of the show is all set to release this year, and for those who may have missed an update or two, here's the complete rundown on what's been happening and an explanation of what exactly the creatures shown in the series are. From debuted pretty quietly back in 2022, and initially people were a little skeptical of it. After all, the intersection of horror and sci-fi isn't always the smoothest. However, in the two seasons the show's been running, it's amassed a cult following simply because of how well thought out and articulate the story's been. You have the obvious element of horror in the form of nightmarish creatures that emerge after dark, a slight tinge of religion in the talismans that protect people's houses from these monsters, and of course, the reasoning behind why all of this happened in the first place. Hopefully, a lot of these questions will be answered in the third season, which fans are excitedly waiting for. In this video, we'll go through a complete rundown on the anatomical structures of the creatures from the show, as well as try to explore their origins and characteristics. It's never been revealed what exactly these creatures are, nor have they been given a specific name. Some of their characteristics represent vampires, while some fans suggest they might actually be closer to zombies. Either way, we're about to get into it, so sit tight, but before we get into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. What are the creatures? From portrays a small mysterious town somewhere in America that traps anyone who walks into it, making that person unable to leave. If that's not enough, the surrounding forest becomes a haven of death after sunset, when mysterious monsters emerge and kill any person who's out in the dark. The only saving grace from these dangerous creatures are certain talismans, which can apparently repel the monsters. At the beginning of the show, we see a family of four stumble into town by mistake, and despite their best attempts, they're unable to set foot outside of the town's boundaries. They then stumble stumble across another family that's gotten into an accident, and as the townspeople rush to help them, it becomes hauntingly apparent that something is very, very wrong with the town. In fact, the creatures prowling around town at night are just the tip of the iceberg. Every aspect of this place is shrouded in layers of mystery and horror, with each episode presenting more and more challenges to the residents. The very premise of the show is based on intrigue and complete suspense, which creates an atmosphere perfect for a horror sci-fi scene. John Griffin, creator of the show, has created a very meticulous world where every character's story is different and has many levels of consciousness. The gore and suspense are very real, and all in all, this show is a big recommend for us if you're into horror and sci-fi. Coming to the crux of our discussion, one of the central plots of From revolves around the mysterious and deadly creatures that emerge from the woods after sunset and wreak havoc across town. Nobody is safe from these creatures, and the only way to keep them at bay is by using certain talismans. Right from the pilot episode where the creepy smiley creature made its debut, fans have been obsessed with knowing exactly what these creatures are. They're equal parts terrifying and intriguing, which makes them the perfect recipe for horror antagonists. In the simplest terms, the creatures are humanoid beings that resemble normal human beings, although they are seen dressed in attire from the 50s. They supposedly reside in the woods surrounding the town, and the most distinctive feature about them is that they all have creepy smiles and sadistic behavior patterns. They only emerge from the woods after the sun is set, and they gang up on any person left outside, eventually killing them. While the exact origins of the creatures have not been revealed as of yet, a lot of fans theorize that they were, at some point, normal human beings. How they turned into these vicious monsters is a mystery still unaddressed in From. These creatures are shown to be extremely intelligent and capable of manipulation, because sometimes they toy around with their victims before killing them. Moreover, they're also shown to be able to lure people out in order to kill them. To make things even better, they are completely immune to conventional weaponry such as guns and knives. The only weakness they seem to have are the talismans, which don't allow them to enter if placed outside a building. It's also an interesting fact that before the talismans were discovered by Boyd, the creatures used to shriek and howl at night. After their discovery, they only whisper. As per their way of killing people, it's possible to come to the conclusion that the creatures don't hunt for sustenance, but rather for sport. This is seen in the way they slowly walk towards their prey and toy with them before dealing the final blow. And this fact further complicates the storyline because if the creatures aren't natural predators, what are they? What do they want? In any natural ecosystem, predators are common, and they hunt to sustain themselves, but the township is obviously under the influence of supernatural forces, which explains why the creatures don't actually kill to feed themselves, but rather, because they enjoy the process. What do they look like? Do they have human body parts? 
As mentioned earlier, the creatures in From look like normal human beings, except for their clothing, which seems to be older. A normal person would be unable to pick out a creature from a lineup of humans, if you could get creatures to actually line up with humans without murdering them. One distinct way the creatures can be separated from humans is through their creepy, sadistic smiles. While the smiley creatures are almost always donning this look, other creatures also occasionally look similar, especially when they're hunting their prey. That being said, the creatures do have a true look, which they only reveal before they're about to kill someone. Therefore, it can be summarized that the creatures are humanoid beings who could have been normal humans at some point in time. More on this in the upcoming season, hopefully, but here's what we know so far. There have been quite a few instances in the series where it's been hinted that the creatures were originally humans. It's quite fascinating to uncover the secrets and theories surrounding the origin of these creatures since they're unique in terms of their conceptualization. Some fans suggest that they are possessed by something that has turned them into what they are currently, and this could have happened sometime in the 1950s since the attire the creatures wear belongs to that era. It is also told that Victor is one of the oldest residents of the town, and presumably one of the oldest survivors as well. He had arrived in the town sometime in the 1970s, so the creatures have presumably been running amok for far longer than that. One of the clues given about the origin of the creatures is seen when Jasmine, a creature, tries to manipulate one of the humans and mentions that the creatures chose to be what they are. It's just a few words, and they're obviously pretty cryptic, but at least they provide a starting point for all the theories surrounding how they came into being. It's also portrayed at times that the creatures are trying to recall human memories that they might have had. This is seen in many instances throughout the series. For example, when the creatures overrun the colony house, the smiley creatures are seen deliberately admiring and looking at the plants. This is a scene packed with action and intrigue, so why would the showrunners focus on this particular aspect of Smiley taking his own sweet time to admire the plants? Was he trying to recall something, or could this have been his house at one point? Of course, answers aren't revealed, but the strategic placement of this scene in the middle of a pretty action-packed sequence does beg the attention of the audience. In the same episode, the creature Jasmine is also seen to be looking at her reflection in the mirror for a pretty long period, as if admiring herself. Narcissism, for lack of a better word, is an attribute that's truly human-like, and therefore it begs the question that maybe Jasmine was admiring herself in a mirror because she used to do the same when she was a human. The last, but most definitive piece of evidence of the creatures being human at one point comes when Christy Miller performs an autopsy on the smiley creature. It is shown that the smiley has the exact same anatomy as that of a normal human being. The only difference lies in the fact that his organs are desiccated and shriveled up with absolutely no fluid except bile, which is found leaking from Smiley's gallbladder. Now, why would these creatures have human anatomy unless they were humans at one point? What on earth could have happened to them that turned them into these violent, bloodthirsty creatures with such a confusing anatomy? It's also worth mentioning here that the actor who played the Smiley creature revealed in an interview that the director had asked him to act as if he is trying to remember how to drive a car in the car scene in season two. Of course, this is technically not canon, so it may not be considered, but the fact that the prompt was trying to remember how to do a human activity could very well indicate that the smiley creature did know how to drive a car, and this is only possible if it was once a human. Do the creatures only hunt at night? Are they vampires? Other than the origin and identity of the creatures, another mystery regarding them is the fact that they only come out to hunt at night. Never in the show has it been shown or suggested that the creatures can come out in sunlight. Moreover, it's revealed that they live deep underground and sort of sleep during the day before emerging after sunset to prey on the people. It isn't just the townspeople in From that have very little idea about what kind of monsters these creatures are. Fans are in pretty much the same boat. However, the creatures seem to know a great deal about human beings, and this is one disturbing aspect which also adds to the theory that the creatures were once human. In the beginning, it seemed like the creatures were actually some sort of vampire empiric entity, since they only hunted at night, resembled humans, and didn't come out at all in the day. Boyd also suggests a theory in the show which basically states that the people of the town are being experimented on, and the creatures are simply tools in the experiment who may have been engineered to be hurt by sunlight. While this hypothesis does support a vampire theory, this doesn't seem very likely, considering the creatures do show their faces just before killing someone, and they don't necessarily have the vampire kind of fangs. Even though they have fangs, they're just not exactly vampire. -like. On top of all this, the blood curse that Boyd suffers from could point to an answer far more complicated than anything as simplistic and overused as vampires. 
Moreover, there's no mention of any religious items such as holy water or the Bible in the series, which is almost always a staple where vampires are concerned. The talismans work as religious objects maybe, but there's a lot of mystery about why and how they work against the creatures. That being said, the human folks and monstrous bloodlust can reflect some sort of fey creatures as well. Fey are generally considered to be an ill-begotten form of fairy folk who were once human, but also prey on humans. There's a particular kind of supernatural creature called a slua, which has been sometimes referred to as too devilish for hell, and its description certainly seems to match that of the creatures. Mind you, this creature is far more evil than even vampires and is simply cruel by nature. It is said that Slua wait in anticipation of nightfall and huddle in dark places throughout the day. Once night falls, they come out and hunt every living being they see. The Slua is technically a kind of fae as well. Therefore, it's entirely possible that the showrunners were inspired by this folklore. Then again, there are some fans who theorize these creatures are Draugr, which are zombies from Norse legend. Either way, we hope to see more about the exact nature of the creatures in the new season. Human to monster. Do they have the ability to shapeshift? One interesting aspect about the creatures in From is their ability to resemble normal human beings. As we've mentioned, the only aspect that separates them from humans is their turning to their true selves just before they kill someone, and maybe the creepy smiles they don while they're toying with their prey. This does point to a certain degree of shapeshifting, so let's get into that. In season one, we see the old lady creature asking to be let inside Megan's house, saying that she is her grandmother. As the name suggests, the creature does look like an innocent old lady. However, Megan points out that she doesn't look like her grandmother at all. This could indicate that while the monsters have some sort of shape-shifting ability which allows them to look like normal humans, they can't shape-shift into specific people. Otherwise, Megan would not have said that the lady doesn't resemble her grandmother. We hope to get more info on this in the following seasons once we get to know more about the origins of the creatures and what exactly happened that turned them into these malevolent beings. Can they manipulate humans? One interesting aspect of these creatures is their apparent ability to manipulate humans. This is mainly explored when Kevin, a lonely resident, becomes infatuated with the creature Jasmine and they begin what appears to be a romantic relationship. Kevin leaves flowers for Jasmine out on the porch during the day and she arrives to collect them at night and the pair talk to each other through the closed window. However, Jasmine persistently asks Kevin to let her into the house. Kevin refuses to do so, to which Jasmine says that she has no other choice but to leave him since she's in love with him and cannot stand not being able to feel him. She also says things like she didn't choose to be who she is, i.e. a creature, and the way she speaks, anyone would think that she's just a harmless person. This happens during Fatima's party at the colony house, and eventually, Jasmine manages to guilt Kevin into letting her in. They start kissing at first, but of course, Jasmine ends up killing him. She then lets other creatures into the house, killing almost everyone at the party. This does suggest that the creatures can manipulate humans. Moreover, it also suggests that they know a great deal about the human mind, which is as distressing as intriguing. Jasmine knew exactly what to say and what to do in order to make Kevin fall in love with her and let her in. This could point to one of the theories we've already discussed, that is, the creatures have such deep knowledge about humans mainly because they used to be humans themselves. Do they feel pain? Are they immune to bullets? Very little has been revealed about the creature's ability to feel any sort of pain or emotions. They are mostly always shown as cruel and calculating, doing whatever they can to kill people and doing it in a way that mocks their prey. However, it's been revealed that the creatures are completely immune to traditional weapons like guns, knives, and blades. They've been shot numerous times in the series to no effect. The only time a creature was successfully killed was when Boyd sort of did a worm transfusion to the Smiley creature by allowing the worms in his blood to travel into the creature's body. This led to the Smiley's death, which then led to its autopsy, which revealed the state of its internal organs. Boyd then collected the bile from the Smiley's gallbladder and dipped bullets into it, thinking that the bile of the creature could possibly harm the other creatures. However, this didn't happen, and the creatures remain immune to bullets. Do talismans completely repel the creatures? The only mythical or religious symbol that appears in From is a rock with mysterious runes carved on it, which can apparently repel the deadly creatures. Boyd was the first to discover these at the Talisman Cave, and then realized that they work within any enclosed space, but not in the open. Before finding the talismans, the people of the town used to pretty much raw dog it, hiding in makeshift shelters or bushes to spend the night safely. After Boyd found them, people placed them at the entrances of buildings and other enclosed spaces, and found that the creatures could not enter them. However, it's important to note that they can still enter if they're invited in, or if any door or window is left open. Therefore, we can't say that the talismans completely repel the creatures, since they can still override the safety the talismans provide. However, given that virtually nothing is known about the creatures, the talismans provide a critical starting point to evading them. Marvelous Verdict! 
Wasn't that one hell of a ride? So far, so little is known about the creatures that there is virtually nothing the townspeople can do to kill them or protect themselves for good. Moreover, let's not forget that there is some sort of spatial warp around the town which forbids anyone who enters from leaving it in the first place. Although Tabitha mysteriously makes her way back to the outside world at the end of season two, it's not explained how. Plus, her family is still stuck in the town. The series certainly started off with a bang and continues its saga of mystery and intrigue, sprinkled with death and gore. Just like you, we're very excited to see what ultimately happens in season three, and if there would be a few more seasons to tie up loose ends. That's all we got for you today, but if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.